my impersonation of everybody reviewing License to Kill. Brosnan was ahead of his time. He was dark. People didn't like dark. They were dumb. Talusa Soto was terrible. She was in Mortal Kombat Annihilation, so she has to be terrible. Carrie Howell was better, although the eye-winking thing in the end was weird. Robert Davi was good. Benicio Toro was good or bad. I don't know. People can't make up their minds. Or do they really care? The shark scene was awesome. It was really dark because of Felix Leiter's revenge plot. The plot of revenging Felix Leiter. Felix Leiter's wife's death and R word. The fact that it involves drugs. There's a lot of action. Q is good in this. Timothy Dalton is very good. He's a great actor. Nothing, no one can say anything bad about Timothy Dalton. He's the best. He's the best that's ever been. He's the best. If you defeat him. He'll just destroy everyone else. It was an underrated Bond. Living Daylights was really dark too. Very scary for everybody. Nothing corny in that. We love you, Timothy Dalton. I remember you from Flash Gordon. Your European actor who played James Bond. The summer of the year of 1989 had so many good films. Batman. And The Land of Fire Part 4, I think, was out that year. It wasn't a famous film, but I definitely think it would affect international box office in Hong Kong. Uh, that's not what they would say, but I would note that. Uh, My Left Foot came out that year, I believe. That was good. Well, I'm going to cheat. I really don't remember the names of all the movies off the top of my head. I used to, but not so much anymore. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, obvious one. Cheated with that one. I didn't need to cheat for that one. Uh, I said movies is good. I don't know about film. So many sequels. Leave Weapon 2, as mentioned by several people. You see a lot top ten. Back to the Future Part Two, after the four year hiatus. So much technology with that one. I didn't shrug the kids. Ghostbusters Two, three year hiatus. The Little Mermaid, Born on the Fourth of July. All dogs go to heaven. Bird the Marl, the Abyss. Babar the movie. Babar. You know, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Black Rain by Ridley Scott, Black Rain by Shohei Inamura. You know that one. It's really good. It has to do with uh, nuclear weapons in Japan. Casualties of War. That, that was definitely a great film by Brian De Palma. Chances are, really hit big in the 80s and 90s, not so much now. Robert Downey Jr. before Iron Man. So, born the 4th of July, and, uh, my anti-war stuff that year. Casualties of War. Crimes and Misdemeanors by Woody Allen. Cyborg by John Cloud with John Cloud Van Damme. The Poet Society, Robert Williams. Do the Right Thing, The Dream Team by with Michael Keaton, also out that year. Go figure. Driving with Daisy, Drugstore Cowboy. The Fabulous Baker Boys, not really a famous film, but Fill the Dreams was. That was a big film. Big in the 80s and 90s, not so much now. Jason Takes Manhattan. Glory. Great Balls of Fire, WWE fans. Uh, Harlem Knights, Hevers, The 
Karate Kid Part 3, Kickboxer, Kiki's Delivery Service. Dun, dun. Little Monsters with Fred Savage. Look who's talking. Uh, the li Little Monsters with Fred Savage probably isn't a big film now, but at the time it was probably big with kids. Major League. Still watched by now. Honestly, a great film, but whatever. The Mighty Quinn. Mystery Train by Jim Jarmusch. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Still played now. New York Stories by Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, and Woody Allen. Puppet Master. Red Scorpion, starring Dolph Lundgren. Played not so much in the 2010s, maybe 2000s, definitely in the 80s and 90s. Roger and Me by Michael Moore. Say Anything by Cameron Crowe. Definitely a big film in the 80s and 90s. Probably still watching now, even though it's not on TV as much. Sex Lives and Videotape won the Palme d'Or. Splendor starring Marcelo Mastriani. Still Magnolias. Uh, big. Not Diane Keaton, not Diane Lane. Sally Field film. At the time. I was thinking Spider-Man. There you go. Uncle Buck. Big film in the 80s. Walk Weekend at Bernie's. When Hen Harry met Sally. Who's Harry Crumb. Uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Not so famous now, but during the Seinfeld era it was famous. Uh, when Harry met Sally. Parodied in WWE films. When they were in Los Angeles. The Wizard, not the most famous film, but it came out that year. Uh, I personally have to go for the full plot of License to Kill, just because everybody does that in there. Very good reviews of License to Kill. Give me the views, etc. So at the beginning of the film, I'm going to spoil the whole film for you, so you don't have to watch it. At the beginning of the film, there's a whole wedding for Felix Leiter and his wife. James Bond is about to celebrate it. Then they get a call about Fran Sanchez or Frank Sanchez. I can't even say it right. I'm a reviewer. I should review this, but I'm not going to. I should research it, but I'm not going to. He's about to go see his girlfriend who's having sex with someone. You didn't need to know that, but I'm going to tell you anyway. He beats the crap out of her. Bitch slap. And, uh... Oh, yeah, it's pretty horrible. I shouldn't have made a joke. Anyway, that's one of the other dark scenes of the movie, which I still think holds up. It was not seen, although we get the marks and the stuff, everything that's shown in the film. Kind of the most people. I think Talissa Soto sells that point part well, and I think everyone agrees, even though they don't say it. There's this whole stunt on how to get Fran Sanchez, played by Robert Davi. In case you didn't know, he's in Die Hard as the FBI agent with Grant Bush, who's also in Street Fighter the movie, who, who most people don't talk about when they review films, because Street Fighter the movie is a bad movie, in case you didn't know. So the Coast Guard grab his plane. They don't bother to tell how he sneaks away. And I almost think he caught, but whatever. That's boring. I'm not going to review that. Uh, Sanchez is about to get away, but he escapes. Then his men go after Felix Leiter. They are his wife. Torture the crap out of him after telling him about that. Then... Bond finds out that wants to get revenge. Fix Leiter was such an important character throughout the series, so of course this was a big deal. Totally consistent. Shark scene, so dark. 
It bit his leg. You could see it. I closed my eyes. So he's back at his home. There's a note. Gangster note. Very scary. Very dark. Barbary. Corrupt cops. NCIA. NSA. Whichever. I forget that fact. No one really cares whether Felix Slater was a part of the CIA or NSA. Whatever. Bob then used the shark tank against French's Frank Sanchez's own men. And the shark eats him too. Very good. More shark eating. Everybody loves this film because of the shark eating. Not enough shark eating in this film. Grand Bush. Mike Bison. Or... The guy from... Or Balrog. Or the guy from Die Hard. Tucks... Tucks the Bond. And then he's running out of the film. After M tries to get Bond to stop. Going after Lighter's revenge plot. Instead, go back to the MI6 missions. All those characters get ruined off for the rest of Bond canon. This is a dark scene because... His license has been revoked. His license to kill has been revoked. Bond gets footed information. He does a lot of spy stuff. Finds more stuff to find out who went after Felix Slider. Sharky, best character ever, get killed. Very sad. Sad moment in. James Bond history. Can't believe they killed Sharky. He was a long recurring character in the series. He involved in multiple James Bond series. He's been played by different characters. Bloody death. Not to mention he was hanged like a shark. Like an animal. That's worse because... Yeah. Not funny. Very sad. Sharky's dead. Then Bond harpoons a good guy. He looks gruesome. He involves the bad guy, so that's so dark. Chris goes after him. James Bond does some sneaking. Good stunt. Flying off a plane. Flying into water skiing. To feed Dalton did his own stunts, in case you didn't know. So he uses all the money. Trying to figure out how to get to Sanchez. Use the Felix Ladder stuff. Meets the Bond girl. Very cool. Nothing wrong with her. Great actress. Not like Tulsa Soto. Mortal Kombat Annihilation girl and model. Can't possibly be a good actress. Or well written. Even though the writing has nothing to do with her acting. Bond meets him in a casino. Cool homage to the entrance of Sean Connery's James Bond in the casino playing Baccarat. Bond makes money. Lupu shows up. She gets out of it somehow. Isn't killed. That totally made sense. Great plot writing by the script. Nothing went wrong. Pam Bouvier poses as a secretary. That's dark because... It's not feminism. Take that, anti or SJWs or whatever. Republic of Ismus. Ninjas. Ninjas are totally dark. They use throwing stars and drugs and they totally knocked them out. Hong Kong narcotics officers looking like ninjas. That totally made sense in this movie. It was really dark because of the dark ninjas. Bond gets saved. Then he does. He kill, makes Sanchez kill his own men. In horrific ways. Really dark movie.
Wayne Newton John's in this. Very good. Sanchez the, goes on a crazy look in his eyes. Tries to kill James Bond. Who does a whole bunch of Papa Willies. Dark Papa Willies. French Sanchez almost kills him. And then Bond is gets the lighter from the beginning of the film. Connecting lighter, Bond, and Sanchez. He sets Sanchez aflame right after he looks at the epic words on the lighter saying that it was Leiter and Della, Leiter's wife, who connected him to Sanchez. Epic plot point, well driven plot point. Friends such as the devil, lit up, red, red like the blood. Very good. The theme song is good. The outro is good. Very good. License Kills, the best film ever. Not only the best Bond film, best film ever. It should have won the Palm d'Or in 1989. It should be not only the best film of all time, but the best film in the universe. The best spy film of all time. The best James Bond film of all time. Timothy Dalton is the best actor ever. He deserves the Oscar. The Palm d'Or for best actor. The Vulcan Pick Up for best actor, etc. We love you, Timothy Dalton. Please come back. Daniel Craig, Pierce Brosnan suck. Roger Moore sucks. Sean Connery's okay. We like Sean Connery. We like Timothy Dalton. We like Daniel Craig sometimes. Pierce Brosnan, I don't know. Leave me alone. That's why every... I say what every... Timothy Dalton fan says. Nothing's wrong with License to Kill. And everybody remembers li Living Daylights. Epic. License to Kill, fan film, review, done all the time. Very good.